The world of cyberpunk is filled with decisions. Take the wrong turn and you might regret it. Today's video will be all about some of the important decisions and their consequences you need to take both during the main story and the side content. Some of them go deeper than it seems, while others will provide some of the best and otherwise completely missable rewards that you can get in the entire game. Obviously, a spoilers alert is in order as we are going to talk about a few key moments in the main story. So if you want to go with a fresh perspective over the game, finish it first and then come later to this video. Now, one of the first big decisions comes as early as one of the first main gigs, the pickup mission. As tempting as it sounds to side with the melee tag and maybe to get the romance with Meredith, you'll actually lock yourself out one of the most powerful guns in Cyberpunk 2077, the Doom Doom iconic pistol and the one belonging to Dum Dum. But you can't take it from him just yet, it can only be done during a later mission in Chapter 3 called the Second Conflict. So there's a route that I always take here to maximize my rewards and also ensure that I get the Second Conflict outcome that I want for the Doom Doom Pistol. First, make sure to grab the credit chip from Meredith and hack it to remove its virus, and this is also going to give you a pretty powerful rare quick hack very early on. Then, at the Maelstrom factory, pay with the chip and let Royce know it was actually spiked and the Militag are onto him. From this point on, just make sure that both Royce and Dum Dum survive this mission so that they later appear in the second conflict. And once you're at that stage later in the game to do the second conflict, you'll now see Dum Dum greeting you at the entrance in the Totem Tense during your visit. And from this point on, it's just a matter of making the violent exit, just make sure you kill him and take his iconic pistol right away. And if it doesn't drop the first time, simply reload the quick save right before that and repeat it until it does so. At number 2 we have the heist mission, which involves even bigger decisions, including the place you should send Jackie's body to, which honestly should always be his family. But way before that, there's lots of items you can miss that you cannot get anywhere else. One of them is Yorinobu's attire. Starting with the coat, you find it in the bathroom to the right side of the elevator as you just made your way in. And then you can also get the shirt and the pants from the container at the top of the stairs to the left side of the same elevator elevator. The coats and the entire attire look really awesome and with the new transmog system in place you can finally make it also be functional. Also pay close attention to the aquarium on your way up as the recent updates added a new pet in the game. You can pretty much remark to Jackie about the iguana lizard over there but you can actually take its egg home and then hatch it. You'll see it behind the tree and it's otherwise easily to miss but totally worth getting. It takes like one in-game month before it fully hatches but it's nice to have an additional friend especially if you also already got nibbles. But let's keep on going because there's a few more items left including the iconic Congo pistol that you find by the side of Yorinobu's bed, the same one pretty much that you likely spotted in Evelyn's BD before the heist. And finally, right as you're about to make your grand escape through the main door, instead of heading through there, go back up the stairs onto the rooftop where you will see this Arasaka vehicle guarded by two enemies. If you defeat them and open the car, inside you'll find the Satori iconic katana, which is again quite useful, especially for the areas ahead. At number 3, we have Ghost Town helping Panem deal with Nash. This is another important point in the main story as it doesn't just open up tons of new rewards but also well romance with Panem and even a brand new ending towards the end of it. So in this case you're gonna be helping her to retrieve her car back but towards the end of this mission she asks you to help her out with a certain character named Nash. So definitely pick the option to help her out as this brings you to his hideout which is filled with enemies as well as loot. The immediate effect here is well if you defeat him you also get the awesome iconic Widowmaker weapon right from his dead cold body. Another major advantage is the fact that this is also the route that eventually gives you the free caliber in a car from the same hideout. By the way, in update 1.5, there was a change that prevents the Caliburn to spawn until you get 40 street cred, but it doesn't take too long until you reach that, the car is absolutely free, it's also one of the fastest in Night City, and on top of that, you also get a free legendary clothing piece from right behind it. All of these decisions of helping Panem are very important and they play a big role if you want to also romance her with a male V character. 
This doesn't just give you other rewards later down the line, but if you follow up until her last mission, called the Queen of the Highway, if you complete that, you also get to open up another secret ending where V gets help from her and the Elder Caldos in the final mission. Moving on to number 4, I walk the line when you meet with the Voodoo Boys, you should probably just side with the Netwatch, as counterintuitive as it might sound. You eventually progress to the main story and meet the Voodoo Boys, which personally I found to be very disrespectful towards V, to the point that they have proven to just use people even if it gets them killed. Eventually you'll have to track down a Netwatch runner nearby, and again the mission structure gives you a few decisions, side with the Netwatch or continue with the voodoo boys for the maximum rewards a bit of revenge and just because it's a lot more fun i always pick the option to side with the netwatch guy this will also clear up the virus implanted into us by placid and at the end of the entire chain you get to fight him for his legendary loot in fact between him and earlier sasquatch in the same mission you'll get quite a few legendary items that can come in quite handy especially now that some of the legendary armor recipes are a bit harder to come by and of course because Placid really has it coming. At number 5, a pretty quick one, but you should probably help Takemura out in the Tapor mission. This is the one where you kinda go in and assault the parade, you also get to fight Oda, it's a pretty awesome mission that just shows you how beautiful the world of Cyberpunk is, but Towards the end of this mission, you'll make your way towards an apartment building where he also stays with Hanako-san and you kind of run through this whole dialogue but eventually a very large group of NCPD officers storm in. So instead of following the mission prompt to run out of the building, take the left instead through this hole all the way back upstairs to help Takemura which is still trapped in the same apartment. This objective is secret and otherwise easily missable but if you escort him out successfully this also unlocks a brand new achievement as well as an additional ending later on where he gives you his help. And even more so earlier than that, if you defeat Ora but not kill him, he will also make an appearance during that mission, so totally worth it because you still get the loot out of it, but he is kept alive. And finally, this brings us to number 7, to chip in in a major side quest, even though it is technically a side quest, it's probably one of the most important in the entire game. It spawns in Act 3 and it plays a major role into other side quests with former samurai band members, including the later second conflict, but also to deepen your connection to Johnny Silverhand, get new secret endings, and get a bunch of very powerful loot. So this includes Johnny Silverhand's iconic jacket, glasses, and the shirt that Rogue already gives you towards the middle of the chipping in as you ride with her. Once you storm to Ebonike with her, you'll also encounter Grayson, which if you keep alive will provide you with Johnny's iconic legendary pistol, and also with access to Johnny's Porsche 911, hidden in one of the nearby containers. But there's more important decisions at the end of this mission, as you make your way to the nearby oil fields, you'll have a conversation with Johnny that can open up a few secret endings. So during that conversation, just make sure you're a friend of Silverhand, but also give him some tough love. So tell him he is the guy that saved your life, then pick the option, nah, after that up too. The next one would be what do you want from me and the final one to open up that secret ending and the new mission. Okay, but as second chances go, this is going to be your last one. If you do this, this is going to open up a secret ending where you just have to storm the Arasaka Tower with him, a bit like in the Edge Runners anime if you want to run like that. And finally, in the same dialogue towards the end, he will ask you to yeah, ask out the rogue on a date. Also make sure you accept that. This will further open up the blistering love side mission with her, during which you will get the chance to romance her. So if you pull that off successfully, there's plenty of guides out there if you want to follow them. This also also further opens up another ending where you instead ask Rogue to help you out with Arasaka instead. Now the final bit is gonna be just his remaining two items including the iconic Johnny pants and of course the boots themselves. You can of course complete your attire and also craft them up to legendary quality which means you don't have to worry about any other crafting recipes. But you get the pants from the gig called Psycho Fan in the Glen area right here on this side of the map 
Well, inside of the apartment, simply grab the pants from the container onto the left side of this bed up the stairs. Meanwhile, for the boots, you can find them through the gig called Family Heirloom in Westbrook Charter Hill. You'll find them in this locker alongside a bootleg shard and the car keys needed for the gig. So totally worth it and you don't have to worry about crafting recipes any longer. But yeah, this is pretty much it with all of the importance and other decisions that literally will make your playthrough perfect and open up all of the other endings that you might have missed previously as well as their achievements. Totally worth it. Let me know down below in the comments if I missed anything or if there's any other decisions that we haven't covered in this video or some of the previous ones. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.